Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Sam Matthew, an enthusiast in scholarly publishing. Hope you and your loved ones are safe during this pandemic. I am sure that you all will agree with me in saying that a lot has changed from when we met last year 2019 September for the peer review week to this peer review week in September 2020. These changes are not just in our personal life. The pandemic is impacting our professional life too, more precisely in scholarly publishing. The theme of this year's peer review week, trust in peer review, is very relevant during these challenging times. Peer review is something which is highly exciting and difficult to achieve in research publications due to multiple reasons such as unavailability of reviewers, lack of relevant constructive and timely feedback, conflict of interest of reviewers, etc. These issues are precipitating more evidently during this COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to the regular research papers, COVID-19 related research papers are floating all over and waiting for the reviewer's feedback. Though I am not an expert in virology, even I have two papers about to be submitted on the psychological impact of COVID-19. Since we all agree that peer review is the most significant contributor in ensuring the quality of published research, we need to look for alternatives to overcome the challenges of current peer review process. We need to, in fact, uh, invest on reducing the burden on the peer reviewers by implementing automation and big data principles, especially in checking the editorial quality, accuracy of references, novelty, etc. Secondly, alternatives such as preprints should also be considered. Though I was personally not in favor of the concept at least a year ago, looking at the current situation, I sincerely think that we should capitalize on the positive aspects of preprint to avoid flooding of manuscripts waiting to be peer reviewed at the editor's desk or, or the peer reviewer's inbox. At the same time, it is also important to understand the objectives of selecting preprint option. If the objective is to improve the quality, still we do not have a solid evidences that preprint option is superior to the regular peer review process, though there are a couple of reports on the same topic, but the findings are debatable. But if the objectives are fast dissemination of knowledge, obtaining uh, credit, receiving uh, diverse feedback and improving the visibility and uh, citations, then I would definitely uh, suggest preprint option with a required caution. Further, m there are multiple published reports that support that preprints accelerated dissemination of research during the past pandemic. Considering all this, in my opinion, the journals or the publishers can provide three options to others. Number one, preprint alone. Number two, preprint plus the regular peer review process. And the number three, the regular peer review process. Of course, the final decision will be of the editor in chiefs based on the author's preferences as well as the immediate impact of the research outcome and the availability of uh, reviewers. Having said that, I do not advocate the current practicing of preprint wherein the author directly submit to the preprint repository, receive feedback through this platform, update the manuscript and submit to the journal and or to the repository again. To enhance transparency and to uphold ethical practice, the journal should have a supervisory role in posting in the preprint repositories and all subsequent activities. In fact, this will definitely build trust in the review process. Therefore, the manuscript should be first submitted to the journal instead of to a preprint repository. Additionally, there, there should be a common independent preprint repository that can be, as well as the the posted manuscripts assist easily through a simple Google search to allow anyone who is interested on the topic can read and comment on those papers. The web version as well as the downloadable versions of preprints should have clear and non-ambiguous disclosure statements mentioning the non-peer-reviewed status of the manuscript, statements on unsure scientific integrity of research, etc. In fact, this, this statement should include messages such as uh, the document is not peer reviewed and hence the scientific integrity is not confirmed. This cannot be considered as a peer reviewed research publication or equivalent to an article published in, another, in, a, in a science journal. Further, any downloadable citation formats of these papers should also indicate the same message. I am sure that this proposal has raised multiple questions in your mind. Of course, that was my intention too. 
Probably we can have a discussion on this proposal in detail on some other relevant platforms. I thank the organizers of the Peer Review Week 2020 and the Asian Council of Science Editors for the opportunity to share my thoughts on this platform. Thank you for your patient listening. Happy editing and happy reviewing. Bye.